Hello guys, happy Wednesday. It's Miss Bland. Um, you're watching this video on Wednesday morning or Wednesday afternoon or at some point on Wednesday because I didn't Zoom with you this morning. Um, I had some things I needed to handle and Wednesday was just a good day to do it because we're off campus. So you guys are gonna be awesome online students today. You're gonna go through your video, you're gonna use it, you're gonna use your resources, you're going to do your work and you're even gonna do your seesaw work. And I'm hoping to go over all of that with you so that you'll be ready to go. So remember, no Zoom this morning and no Zoom at 12. To get started, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need your red packet. You're going to need your social studies page for Wednesday. And of course, you need your notebook to make sure you have all those things near you so we can get started. Pause here if you need to go get something. Awesome, let's get going. I'm so excited for you to be with me today, even if you're with me in a little different form. It's always good to switch it up and do something different. And today we're doing something a little different. So let's talk about where we are. It's Wednesday and you know, Wednesday is our remote day. So of course my background's a little different because it's plans at home. Um, Wednesday is the day we clean the schools really well. Um, we don't know when they're gonna let some of you come back that have chosen to return, but we know that we have to be clean either way. So our custodians work very, very hard to keep things clean and ready to go. So happy Wednesday from Papa, he's got his spinach. Today is September the 23rd, 2020. Remember our virtual rules, they have not changed. Today they're a little different because we're not on Zoom together, but I do think you need to find a spot like you're in class and you need to listen real good. It's a little different when Ms. Bland is on a little screen over in the corner. So to say hello to me today. Today's a little different, so listen up everybody, especially those that normally do my video. Today is a little different. Today, today I will be counting a seesaw activity, just one, as long as you do one. One seesaw activity today will be your attendance. So if you don't get time to submit your packet page, that is fine. If you can't get to seesaw and you need to send me a packet page, that will be fine. And my friends, that those are for my friends that Zoom, that normally um, don't Zoom. My Zooming friends, you're watching this, you're good to go. Moms and dads, I do not need you to send me um, every page they do or any of that, we're good. Um, so this is just for my friends that aren't a part of our normal Zoom life. So we'll go from there. So, okay. So we're gonna talk about accepting differences. We're going to talk about our SEL lesson for the week, which deals with which deals with our topic, which goes with being able to accept differences in other people. So we're gonna talk about what those differences are and how we address them. So our first thing you're gonna see is a really cool video. And it's one of Miss Bland's favorite Dr. Seuss books. And we're going to talk about how it promotes differences. And it's called The Sneeches. So let's watch The Sneeches. by Dr. Seuss. Now the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain belly sneeches had none upon dogs. Those stars weren't so big. They were really so small. You might think such a thing wouldn't matter at all. they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag, we're the best kind of sneech on the beaches. With their snorts in the air, they would sniff and they'd snort, we'll have nothing to do with the plain belly salt. <laughs> and 
And whenever they met some, when they were out walking, they'd hike right on past them without even talking. <laughs> when the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You could only play if your bellies had stars. And the plain belly children had none upon the horse. When the star belly sneeches had frankfurter roasts, or picnics, or parties, or marshmallow toasts. They never invited the plain belly sneeches. They left them out cold in the dark of the beaches. They kept them away, never let them come near. And that's how they treated them, year after year. Then one day, it seems, while the plain belly sneeches were moping and doping alone on the beaches. Just sitting there, wishing their bellies had stars, a stranger zipped up in the strangest of cars. My friends, he announced in a voice clear and keen, my name is Sylvester McMonkey McBee. And I've heard of your troubles. I've heard you're unhappy. But I can fix that. I'm the fix-it-up chappy. I've come here to help you. I have what you need. And my prices are low, and I work at great speed. And my work is 100% guaranteed. <laughs> then, quickly, Sylvester McMonkey McBean put together a very peculiar machine. And he said, you want stars like a star belly sneech? My friends, you can have them for three dollars each. Just pay me your money and hop right aboard. So they clambered inside. Then the big machine roared. Think about it. Would you have jumped inside that machine just to get a star on your belly? Hmm. That's a tough one. And it walked, and it jerked, and it burped, and it bopped them about. But the thing really worked. When the plain belly sneeches popped out, they had stars. They actually did. They had stars upon dars. Then they yelled at the ones who had stars at the start. We're exactly like you. You can't tell us apart. We're all I bet the star bellies Nietzsche's don't like that. All just the same now, you snooty old smarties. And now we can go to your Frankfurter parties. Good grief! Groaned the ones who had stars at the first. We're still the best speeches, and they are the worst. But now, how in the world will we know? They all frowned. If which kind is what, all the other way round. Then up came McBean with a very sly wink. And he said, things are not quite as bad as you think. So 
so you don't know who's who. That is perfectly true. But come with me, friends. Do you know what I'll do? I'll make you again the best sneeches on beaches. And all it will cost you is $10 eaches. Belly stars are no longer in style, said McBean. What you need is a trip through my star off machine. Wait a second. They were special because they had a star on their belly. Now they're paying $10 to get the star taken off? Oh, my. This wondrous contraption will take off your stars so you won't look like sneeches who have them on bars. And that handy machine, working very precisely, removed all the stars from their tummies quite nicely. Then, with snoots in the air, they paraded about, and they opened their beaks and they let out a shout. <laughs> we know who is who. Now there isn't a doubt. The best kind of sneeches are sneeches without. <laughs> then, of course, those with stars all got frightfully mad. To be wearing a star now was frightfully bad. Then, of course, old Sylvester McMonkey McBean invited them into his star off machine. Then, of course, from then on, as you probably guess, things really got into a horrible mess. of that day on those wild screaming beaches the fix it up chappy kept fixing up sneeches guys look at this picture they are so afraid of being different or wanting to be different that they're going in and out of the machine but look at the fix it up chappy what's he back there getting you guessed it all their money off again on again, in again, out again. Through the machines, they raced round and about again, changing their stars every minute or two. They kept paying money. They kept running through until neither the plane nor the star bellies knew Whether this one was that one, or that one was this one, or which one was what one, or what one was who. Then, when every last cent of their money was spent, the Fix It Up Choppy packed up, and he went. And he laughed as he drove in his car up the beach. They never will learn, no? You can't teach a snitch. But McBean was quite wrong. I'm quite happy to say that the snitches got really quite smart on that day. The day they decided that sneeches are sneeches. And no kind of sneech is the best on the beaches. That day, all the sneeches forgot about stars and whether they had one or not upon bars. So, they learned a very important lesson. They learned that it didn't really matter because it says that day they decided 
that snitches are snitches and no kind of snitch is the best on the beaches. So no matter what kind of snitch it was, they weren't any better than the other snitches. That the star didn't make you better than someone else. And that's the same thing Ms. Vester is trying to teach us with our lesson, is that we're no better than anyone else just because of how we look or something that we have or something that we do. That doesn't change who we are. So that's an important lesson. So there's a lot of things we can learn from the snitches. So your assignment is you have a seesaw assignment that you really want to tell me what you learned. What did the snitches teach you about being different? And you're going to input your answer for me there on seesaw once you log into seesaw today to complete your assignment. Let's talk about our packet. Our packet has a red cover. You know that your name should be up at the top. You know that your 12 spelling words are here and that your eight vocabulary words are here. If you read an epic book today, I'm going to assign a couple just to give you um, some reading guidance if you need it. Then be sure you color a gumball for me. I'd love to see that you're reading. Your fluency passage is on the back of the red page. Today is Wednesday, so you'll read it out loud one time. You will color the Wednesday cloud. If you've not done your questions, you may choose to do those today, or you could even wait till tomorrow or Friday. Choice is totally yours. I bet half of you've already done them. Letterland, of course we use Letterland for our spelling and to become better readers and writers. It's important that we know our letters and sounds and how they go together. Some of them have some very special relationships that make different sounds, so we must know how they work. This week we're talking about that super E and that silent E gave all of its power to the vowel and it became silent. We're dealing with um, long I, long O, and long A. Your four long A words are face, space, place, and shade. Repeat those, go. Good job. Now we have four words that are long O words. Can you guess what color they are? If you said blue, you're exactly right. They are clothes, nose, hope, and alone. Repeat those. Very good. Our last set of long vowel words are the long vowel I. We have price, advice, mice, and nice. Take a second to repeat your green words. Very good. Today for your spelling assignment, you have six spelling sentences. You are welcome to put your six sentences in your notebook if that is somehow better for you because of internet issues or something to that nature. But Ms. Bland would totally prefer that your six sentences make it into Seesaw today. Our reading story. For the last two days, we focused on the story that's in your reading book. Well, you know, Ms. Bland always loves to switch it up. So Papa says it's time for reading. And today we're moving to a different story. We're still dealing with unit, unit one, week five of Reading Wonders. But today we're gonna talk about a different story. And we're still talking about how families are working together. That's gonna be a part of our story today too. This last computer has frozen, see? Does the same thing all the time, no matter where I am. There we go. So our essential question, what makes families work together? What happens when families work together? We know they get tons of things accomplished. And I even think in yesterday morning in our group, somebody said they do it faster. And that's very true. Sometimes when you're a part of the family and everybody's working together, we do accomplish things faster. We've got eight vocabulary words that we will see this week. Check, choose, chores, cost, customers, jobs, spend, tools. Remember in your reading book, they're in yellow boxes and in the story that you will see with Ms. Blaine in a few minutes, they are also in yellow boxes. You are expected to know those definitions by Friday. Remember our text is expository, which means it's gonna give us facts and information about a specific topic. Is that not the cutest little monkey right there? And we're going to of course answer some questions. Ms. Blaine always wants to make sure you understand and so answering questions is our way to check for understanding. I need to make sure you know what you read. And telling key details. We don't make things up from stories. We like to use what we know happened. It's important that you can retell a story saying exactly what happened using those transition words like first, next, then, and last. So let's meet our story. The title of our story is Families Working Together. 
in your packet, you can turn to the page that looks like mine. This will be your you do assignment, but Ms. Bland is going to get you started. I am going to do the first box with you after we've looked at our story. All right, this is the story that's in your big book, which means you guys don't have it in your book, but that's okay. Ms. Bland is gonna read it with you. And also guys, if you need it later on, Ms. Bland did post it in Seesaw. Genre, expository text, time for kids, families working together. Essential question, what happens when families work together? Read about a family that works together on a farm. So we know that the setting of our story is going to be on the farm. We're going to meet a family and they're going to work on the farm. How does a family farm work? It's 3.45 a.m. on Tuesday. Mary Gelder is ready for work. She and her mom drive many miles from their farm in Michigan to Chicago. They sell fruits and vegetables at a farmer's market. Customers visit their farm stand to buy fresh food. I love seeing who will eat the food my family works hard to grow, Mary says. After a long day, the Gelders return home. They do it all again on Saturday. But their work does not stop there. Each day they do many chores. The family plants, waters, and picks fruits and vegetables. So we met the Gelder family on Tuesday. They go to the farmer's market, and then they go to the farmer's market again on Saturday. And she said she enjoys seeing what the family is selling to the people that come there. So that's always great that you're getting a chance to see who buys the stuff that you grow. That's what a farmer's market becomes important because you get to see what's there. One of Mary's jobs is to care for the chickens. Her brothers repair trucks and tractors. They check farm tools such as shovels and drills. Mary's mom, Renee, takes care of money and workers. When the Gelders choose what to plant, they look at demand. In the summer, people want strawberries, so the family plants a lot of them. Sometimes they sell less than they have. The Gelders turn the extra fruit into jam. I love strawberries, Mary says. It's great to have jam in the winter when there is no supply of fresh strawberries producing and consuming. Some people produce items that people buy. People who buy items are called consumers. Here's a look at some items that are produced and who consumes them. What's produced? Who consumes it? What's produced? Bicycles. Who consumes it? Kids and athletes. What's produced? Books. Who consumes it? Teachers, students, readers. What's produced? Food. Who consumes it? People and animals. What's produced? Cars. Who consumes it? Drivers. Running a farm costs money, so the Gelders try to save. Some time ago, they bought an outdoor wood stove. They burn the farm's old trees for heat. The heat warms their home and barn. It helped the family spend less during the cold months. We help each other and we help the environment, Renee says. I'm really proud of my family and our farm. The Gelder family farm produces apples and other fruits. People buy jam and fresh food from the Gelder family's farm stand. All right, good job. Now, there is another story, but it's a very short one, and we don't need that for right now, so that's okay. We're going to talk about key details. In your packet page that I told you to turn to, there are three boxes that are set aside for key details. Ms. Bland wants you to be able to go back in a story and find things that you think are important to what our story is about. And our story is about the families working together. So I'm going to choose a key detail 
It gives me some information about how their family works together. And I found a sentence on the first page. The family plants, waters, and picks fruits and vegetables. It's right there on my first page. The family plants, waters, and picks vegetables. So that's gonna be everybody's first block. The family plants, waters, and picks vegetables. The family plants, waters, and picks fruits and vegetables. The family plants, waters, and picks fruits and vegetables. So in my first box, that's what I'm going to put. That's a key detail to that family working together. Ms. Blaine forgot what it said. The family plants, waters, and picks fruits and vegetables. So that's a fact. That is a text evidence answer from my story. So I'm going to write that and I'm going to include it as part of one of my details. What Ms. Bland needs from you is that now that Ms. Bland has shared one with you, you need to find two more. So you can pause your computer on this page if that's the page you want to use, or you can pause your computer on this page and find two more key details that go along with our story. Pause here to do that. Great. If you're back with me, that means you filled in your two bottom boxes that were a part of your you do. Can't wait to see what you came up with. We're working with possessive nouns this week. We're trying to show ownership. When we have that apostrophe S added to a word, it shows who owns it. Pam's pencil. We know that pencil belongs to Pam. So Ms. Bland wants you to look on the back. Look on the back of the page we just did. So you just did this page. Oh, Ms. Bland's camera's off, sorry guys. You just did this page. You just did this page. I want you to take that page and just turn it and it should be blank. Nothing's here. We're going to do something here. So turn here. So when you turn here, we are going to work on some possessives, but I need you to look at what my possessives are. I'm going to show you some examples and then you're going to do two for me on this page. So the first one, I had a monkey and a banana. So I said it was the monkey's banana, apostrophe S. Look at that apostrophe up at the top. Some of you in Seesaw today put it down at the bottom and I had to mark it wrong because we had a whole conversation about sitting at the back of the S's head. A lion's mane, the mane of the lion, his hair belongs to the lion. It belongs to the lion. Then we have the rabbit's carrot. So we got a rabbit and he has a carrot. So it's the rabbit's carrot. And then that's the bulldog's tongue. I love this picture. That's the bulldog and that's his tongue. So that's an example of a possessive. What's going to happen? I'll go back so you can see the other one too. What's going to happen is you're going to draw for me two possessives. You can draw animals. You can draw yourself and tell me something you own. You are going to divide your paper in half. You're going to draw a line across. You're gonna draw a picture at the top and write the possessive phrase. You're gonna draw a picture at the bottom and write the possessive phrase. Now you can't draw what I drew. So if you draw a monkey, he's gotta have a tree or some tennis shoes or a bag of Skittles, you know I me. Mean? But he has to have something other than a banana because I've already done banana. And if you draw a lion, he's gotta be eating a mouse or something like that because Ms. Bland has already talked about his mane. If you choose that cute rabbit, you're gonna to have to talk about his long ears or something else about the rabbit because I've already talked about his carrot. So be careful, think hard, pause here and give me two possessives. Good luck, can't wait to see what you come up with. Pause here to do them. If you need to stretch, if you need to get water, if you need to use the bathroom, now would be the time. Pause your computer here. Make sure that you have finished your two possessives and your three boxes for our story and you can pause here and take a quick break. 
if you need one. If you don't need one, let the video keep rolling and Ms. Bland is gonna keep rolling. It's math time. Math this week has been a lot of review and it's been good review because place value is something that you're always gonna need. So it's important that we review it often and talk about it. We are still in module three and we are on lesson two. And today we're gonna talk about building and expanding. We're gonna build a number and then we're gonna expand that number and add on to it in order to get where we wanna go for our next number. So everyone turn to a clean page in your notebook so that you're ready for our lesson. We are gonna draw a couple of examples because Ms. Bland always likes for you to have an example in your notebook so that you'll have something to go back and look at. Today's date, of course, is the 23rd. So you can put that up at the top. We are in module three, lesson two, put that up at the top. So let's talk about it. Let's say I have the number 100. Well, that's easy enough, Ms. Bland. I know how to do that. Show me 100. Here you go, Ms. Bland, I showed you 100. Very good, I would tell you. That is indeed 100. You showed me 100. Remember our flat is 100. Hopefully yours looks better than Ms. Bland's. Now, if I tell you that I want you to use units, units are my hundreds, tens, and ones. I want you to use units to count from 100 to 114. So I'm going from 100 and I wanna go to 114. So I already have 100. Am I gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six? No, we wanna use the biggest units we can until we have to use the smaller ones. So we got 100, 110, 111, 12, 13, 14. There's my 114. Oh, we should always box off our first number. Sorry about that, that's gonna be important. Let's try another one. Suppose my number is 136. So I'm going to do 100, 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. And I'm gonna box off 136. From the 136, I'm trying to get to 240. Ooh, that's a lot. Here we go. So I'm at 136. Hmm, I can do a big jump. 136, if I add 100, that's 236. 236, 237, 38, 39, 40. So that's a big jump. Look at the little jumps, and then I have big jumps. I want you to try this one without Ms. Bland. Let's go from, you're going to draw and label a box that has 94. And from 94, Ms. Bland wants you to go to 163. From 94 to 163. So I've got to do 94, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and box it off. There's my 90. Oh, I forgot my four. One, two, three, four. There it is, 94. Now, from my 94, I got to go to 163. So 94, 100. Oops, let's see, let's get an even number. 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. So then let's do 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 161, 62, 63. Now you could have drawn them over here, but I just wanted you to see the process of how we went from 94. We added six ones, then we added six tens, and then we added three ones. So that's the process of how we got there. In your notebook, we want to make sure that you understand that process. So on the back of that page, let's make sure that we're good to go. And we're going to do 
three more. I'm going to give them to you and then I'm going to want you to pause and work through them and then unpause and check to see if yours match mine. So let's do 74. Let's go from 74 to 200. 200. Let's go even more. Then we're going to do one in the middle from 135 to 438. 438. Now, think about it. There's one thing that's going to be really important. And if we were in school, I would be telling you this so that you wouldn't copy your neighbor's paper. But I'm going to tell you this because I don't want you to change your answer if it doesn't match what Ms. Bland does. There are more than one way to get to these answers. There's not just one, there's more than one. So if Ms. Bland does it one way and you do it a different way, that does not mean your way is wrong. It just means that's not the way I did it. But it does not mean that your way is not the correct, that your answer is not correct. Let's do a big one. Let's do 340, it's a big one. All right, pause here and give these three a try. All right, Ms. Bland is gonna give these three a try because I want you to see what I did. So I'm gonna walk through them and hopefully your answers look similar to mine. 74, oh, Ms. Bland's about to draw 100. See, you gotta be careful. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74. And then I'm gonna put my box around it because that's my first 74. 74, 84, 94, 104, 114, 124, 134, 144, 154, 164, 174, 184, 194, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 200. Phew, that was a lot. What could Ms. Bland have done? That was 74. I could have also said 174, 184, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 200. So that's two different ways you could have done that. Either one of them would have been acceptable, but there are differences. 135, 100, 10, 20, 30, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I put my box around it, I draw it, I label it, I box it. So 135, 235, 335, 435, 436, 437, 438. I hope you did that one that way because that made it super simple. And my last one, 120, 100, 10, 120. I'm going to box them off. 120, 100, 220, 320, 330, 340. Pause here to make sure you have all of this down. You'll need it because you've got four you're going to do for me in just a moment. In your packet, you have in your packet, your handy dandy packet, woo, woo, you've got these two pages. You are going to draw and label a box. Oh, I have in backwards order though. Did I not do one? Oh my goodness, I skipped number one. Well, you have number one and number two. Number one says you're gonna draw 100 and then you're gonna count up or expand to 124 using units. You must use the units. You must draw the units. I must see the units. So you're gonna do number one and number two, and then you're gonna do number three and four. I don't know why I didn't take a picture of one and two, but then you're gonna do three and four. So let's look at three real quick, just so you'll have an example. So get that packet page, turn with me, and let's look. We're gonna draw, label, and box 85. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. I'm gonna box it, and I know that I'm gonna label it going to label it as 85. All right, I'm going to 120. So 85, 95, 105, 115, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 120. You are welcome to go in 85, 95, 105, 115, 
120. You're welcome to do that. It's not mandatory, but you do need to label your starting point and you need to label the number that you got to on the end. So make sure that's a helpful hint for someone who may have needed it. All right, let's see. Oh, there's number one. There's, oh, I did three of them, both of them, that's weird. Number one is 100 and number two is 124. So it's your turn, of course, to show some math skills. I know that you have tons of them. You can pause here to do your math just so you'll remember, or you're welcome to keep watching the video and do all your work on the end. This plan doesn't mind whichever way works better for you and your family. Social studies this week, we're talking about economics. And we started off talking about needs and wants. We, were, we talked about that needs are things we must have to live and survive, but that wants are things that we'd like to have, but we don't need them to stay alive. They're not required for us to stay alive. Take a moment to look at these pictures of the things that they consider needs on both sides at the top and wants are down at the bottom. Look at that cool lollipop. So you started off talking about social studies weekly because in order to get these needs and wants, we have to be able to do some type of trade or work. And with that, you had questions. Last night, you were supposed to do questions six through 10 and make sure you have answers for those. Keep up with your answers. Ms. Bland will go over them with you on Thursday. That's what they looked like. If you haven't done them, now's a great chance because I won't be looking at them until Thursday when we talk about them. So make sure, actually, I won't see them until Friday, but make sure you go over them and see if you're happy with your answers. Check to make sure you use the text. That makes all the difference. So then you have packet that looks like our weekly reader number 23. And we need that one for today as we start talking about goods and services. It's gonna tell you the definitions of what a good is. It's things that people have to buy them and we use them. And that a service is something that you do for someone. And it's gonna go into detail about how that happens and what they are. Ms. Bland needs you to read it. Once you've read it, you have a page where you're going to fill in the who am I? Am I a producer? a consumer, a good, or a service, and you'll put the correct word on the line. You'll only use the word one time at the top and one time at the bottom because there's four words and there's four boxes. Now, someone asked Ms. Bland today, I think it was, what you guys were going to do about the back page of 21, and I do want you to do that, but you can do that whenever it's best for you. So if your family has something else going on today, no worries, fill it in later. But you do need to do the fill in the blank at the top. You do need to take these words in the word bank and put them in ABC order. And you need to find your favorite color and color in Nicaragua on the map, which is the white space. Color it your favorite color, excuse me. These are the words for ABC order, I'm sorry. Families, trade, money, scarcity, and food. So those are the words for your ABC order. So if you've not done this, it does need to be done by the end of the week. They will be turned back in with everything else. All right, guys, guess what? You're amazing as always. You never cease to amaze me with all the amazing things that you manage to keep up with me doing and do them well. You don't just turn in stuff that's not right. You guys take time to do it and you make sure that you do it well. And I appreciate you, your moms and dads and me moms and papas for all of that hard work and getting everybody done in this. The last thing Ms. Bland is going to share with you before I leave is your seesaw activities. I want to make sure everybody knows what they're looking to do. There are quite a few of them. So moms and dads, before you blow my phone up and blow me up in dojo, I have not lost my mind. Um, they are all the assignments for today and for tomorrow. There are five of them. The only thing I will add tomorrow is a spelling uh, word search that will get added tomorrow, but that's the only addition. So that's everything for today and tomorrow. So no worries. I will not be checking um, them or turning them off or anything like that. So do as much as you can today while you have free time, while there's no Zooming. You know, get caught up. Um, if you have some old Seesaw assignments, go ahead and get those before Ms. Bland takes them down. I'd love for you to get those finished instead of getting a zero. These will be up for about a week. So pick and choose what you do. But let's talk about Seesaw. You've got five activities. None of them are long and none of them are hard. So I'm hoping because they're short and they're quick that they will be the easiest thing for you to do. As you guys have probably noticed, your packet is getting smaller 
but your online work is increasing. We've got to get you online. So that's what we're striving to do these days. All right, so here's where we are. You have a needs and wants activity. All you're doing is looking at the picture and deciding whether it's needs or wants. You either circle it if it's a need or want. You can circle the word, you can color in the box, you can put an X on it, whatever works for you works for me as long as you choose one answer. The next activity is your spelling sentences. Remember for your spelling sentences, you are being asked to put your sentence in the box. You can click on the T over on the side and you can type out your sentence, excuse me, or you can use your, if you're using an iPad or a touch screen, then you can write out your sentence with your finger. Seesaw does work on tablets and phones and those things, moms and dads, if you are interested in um, using those to get assignments done because the kids work better, especially those that don't have a mouse. If you'll let me know, I can get that info to you. Then you have your Sneetches activity. You are going to tell me the lesson that you learned from the Sneetches. You can write it right there. The next one is families working together. Ms. Bland gave you two things on this one. I have given you a link. There's a link. You see that nice little link right there? It turns blue when you touch it. That's a link to the story. If you need to hear the story again, go there. If you don't need to hear the story again and you're ready to do the work and underlining and circling some stuff, then you make sure you start, you do it. But there's going to be some extra blue boxes because there's four pages. There's not just one. You need to do all four. And next up is goods and services. You have a page that shows goods and services. Remember, a good is something that you buy and a service is something that you do. So you're going to look at the picture and make a decision. Is that something I could buy for a good or is that a service? A cheeseburger and a drink. Is that something that I do for somebody? No, it just makes Ms. Bland fat. So that's not something that I do. That would be a service. So I'm gonna circle service with my pen, my highlighter, or my pencil. You can also exit out so that I'll know you're choosing it. But you can't start Xing out and then switch over to circles and then switch to hearts. Uh -uh. Whatever you start the first number one with, you should be using that same answer key for number 12. And then the next thing is your ordering place value. Ordering place value, Popeye's there to meet you. And Popeye has given you four numbers. Well, they're sort of numbers. He's given you the place value. Your job is to put them in order from the one that's the largest down to the smallest. So think about your hundreds, think about your tens, and think about your ones and make a decision as to which one you think is first, next, then, and smallest or last. So they move. If you will click on that pencil, it has the finger. That's our moving cursor and it will move each of these down into order for you from the largest to the smallest. Be careful of that part. So that's how that will go. Please remember that the Bailey, that we're going virtual. For our Seesaw activities you had, I was originally gonna do seven. Can you guys believe that? I did cut it back to five, but no worries, they are not all due today. They will be up there. I will be sure not to touch them. Then of course you have your Bailey specials. Remember to visit the Bailey Specials page and get those done. Guys, these are not optional. Mr. D, Ms. Ellington, and Ms. Reason, they need you to come to their classes. They need you to do what you're supposed to do for their lessons. So not only will you get your picture sometimes posted on Facebook, but you can also send them to me so I can see what amazing things you are doing in those classes. I miss you guys being here and going to Block, and I learn what you learned in Block when you get back. So for attendance today, because everybody's watching, remember what I said? Dun, da, da, da. you don't have to submit. And I'm so excited that everybody came and did my video that even if you're one of my regular video people, you don't have to submit today either. Everybody's attendance will be counted present. And so some people will know it because they're on here and they're listening. Some people will still send it because they didn't listen. But today is freebie day. Yay, Ms. Bland loves something free. And so my freebie for you today is that you don't have to turn anything in. But you've already watched all this video and done it. Yes, but you still have to do the work, guys. That just means when I get your packet, I'll see it versus you sending it to me because with everybody virtual, my phone will be blowing off all day. So talk about amazing, talk about it because you are. You are so awesomely amazing.
So air hugs and kisses and all my good wishes for an amazing day. You've got plenty of work to do. Red packet passage, seesaw work, packet work. You've got something to do. So don't tell mom and dad you don't. I can always send something else for you to work on. So if you finish early and mom and dad say, oh my goodness, you should be in school. We do have some other resources we can get with you about. So you just need to let me know that that's something that you need. I think you guys are amazing. You handle everything so well. So I have no doubt that your work will show it. If you need something, let Ms. Bland know. I will try my best to help you get it. I'll try my best to help you have whatever it is that has messed up or needs to be replaced. I am going to sign off. I hope that you have a great day. If you have questions about your work, always, always, always ask. And Ms. Bland will be sure to get you an answer. So have a great, great, great Wednesday.